Hello guys, um, are you worried about what to do and how to manage a patient um, uh, who is confused with the previous history of uh, alcoholism and uh, you are the doctor in the a &E? So let's talk about that. Uh, you might be worried about the same menstruation uh, with the history of alcohol presented with the confusion. I'm Dr. Rashid from Plab Guide Academy and I'm the Plab Trainer. Let's talk about this uh, particular scenario. So I'm going to teach uh, how to manage such patients. This is one of the real life situation where you may see the patients coming in the a &E with a previous history of uh, alcoholism and uh, they're confused, maybe found by someone, found on the floor, found on the road and uh, you are the doctor who will be seeing the patient so how you are going to manage this is very important and what are the important things that you need to look for and what are the important things that you should never miss any patient who is confused may have uh, multiple things going on there are multiple reasons for any patient to be confused uh, so the key thing key element that you want to make sure of is that you follow a b c d e protocol in this uh, situation start the patient's assessment make sure before you start the patient's assessment or anything uh, that you have all the um, material your trolley is ready and everything you know that uh, where your medications are and all, all the material that you have available so go and um, find out the details of the patient and start your assessment following the a b c d e protocol in um, in the cubicle talk to the patient if the patient is talking to you it means that the patient's airway is patent however if there's any concerns you will have to address that if the patient is talking to you it is important again that you look into the throat uh, and uh, start the patient on oxygen be careful if the patient is uh, uh, known to have COPD then you will have to be careful about giving the high flow oxygen if there is no history of um, uh, COPD start the patient on high flow oxygen with non rebreathe mask and connect the patient to the cardiac monitor move to B which includes the assessment of the respiratory system the chest expose the chest of the patient and uh, do the inspection palpation percussion auscultation of the patient make sure that you check the respiratory rate as well as oxygen saturation spo2 and you should see them in combination never see one single number in isolation high flow oxygen should be continuous after you have done the assessment, um, based on your findings, you should give the patient further intervention if needed. Like if you can, if you can hear some crackles, give them antibiotics. The patient with the history, with such history, may have the chest infection as well as um, alcoholism. Uh, that could be contributing factor in such patients. Getting the chest x-ray is extremely important in such patients. Then after you have done the assessment of B, move to C. Before you move to C, make sure that your patient is still talking, reassess the patient and uh, then continue your assessment of the circulation. Check the capillary refill time, check their blood pressure, their pulse and the temperature. You must check the temperature in circulation because this is where the patient uh, will need more intervention, especially if the patient is septic. Make sure that you check the temperature. Keep an eye on the numbers because hypothermia as well as hyperthermia, both of them are the signs of infection. However, the patients who are confused, you should still start the patient on antibiotics, broad spectrum antibiotics, um, according to the trust protocol. Stopping the treatment, stopping the antibiotic is always an option, but you should not delay because this patient is confused. We have very limited information and uh, we will not be able to get sufficient history in such patients. Take all the blood investigations, including UNEs, LFTs, CRP, liver function tests is very important. Coagulation profile is very important, especially because of the history of alcoholism. The patient may have deranged coagulation profile that includes the PTINR because of the 
liver problems if they have any underlying liver problems secondary to the alcoholism and also take the blood cultures that's um, that is normally done when the patients are coming confused we take the blood cultures uh, just to make sure that we are not missing anything it is also important that you do abg or vbg especially i would tend to do abg if the patient is hypoxic if there is no hypoxia then you can go with the vbg however these are very important investigation and they can give you a lot of information just in uh, in few minutes because these are instantly available in the emergency department in terms of the intervention start the patient on iv fluids iv antibiotics and um, give them thiamine and chlordiazepoxide because the patient may develop alcohol withdrawal especially because of the history so you do not want to uh, want your patient to develop the seizures or any other complication because of uh, the alcohol withdrawal so you must prevent that in terms of uh, investigation i've already talked about uh, ruling out any uh, any infection by checking the unes lft crp and full blood count do the blood cultures as well now after you completed your circulation before you move to d or the disability it is important that you go back and reassess the patient talk to the patient again and cast your eyes on the monitor make sure that the oxygen saturation is um, stable make sure that the patient's breathing is normal it is not deteriorating okay and then you move to d in d you will have to assess the patient's sensorium that's a consciousness by talking to the patient using avpu scale so it has to be just a very quick assessment just in few seconds a is alert v is a response to voice and uh, p is a responsive to the pain and u is unresponsive patient any patient who is responding to the pain or not responding should be immediately referred to the itu and the nsts because the patient will need intubation however before you jump to that it is important that you find out you rule out any reversible problems that could be leading to the confusion or the low gcs that mainly includes hypoglycemia or um, opioid overdose or overdose of any other medication so after assessing the patient on avpu scale check the patient's pupils the pupil checking the pupils in such patients coming with a confusion coming with a history of recurrent falls is extremely important because they are at high risk of developing subdural hematomas or the head injuries which could also be contributing towards a low gcs in the confusion so check the pupils of the patient if they are unequal they um, unequal pupils are suggestive of uh, head injury check the patient's glucose if it is below 4 treat the glucose with dextrose 10% dextrose or 20% dextrose whichever is available if you have the iv line if there is no iv line give the patient intramuscular glucagon and try to achieve the iv line as soon as possible find out the drug history of the patient if the patient is known to take any medication make sure that the patient is not on any tranquilizer that could be uh, causing the confusion or the low gcs and before you jump to e or the exposure reassess the patient from a to c again talk to the patient cast your eyes on the monitor make sure all the numbers are stable if you find any deterioration you are not supposed to be moving forward stay there reassess the patient say for example in the beginning the patient does, did not have any hypoxia but now on your reassessment you found that the patient has a hypoxia so it is important that you reassess the patient's airway and examine the patient just again rather than you jump to e in e expose the patient fully from head to toe make sure that you have the chaperone you Uh, maintain the dignity of the patient and examine the patient's skin thoroughly 
but as quick as you can look for any redness any ulceration anything that could be uh, worrying for you and cover the patient and create your list of investigations starting from a to e and make sure that you chase all the investigations and start the patient on the treatment now in terms of the intervention from a to e you're going to be starting the patient on high flow oxygen if the patient is not known to have copd if the patient has a copd use a venturi mask request a chest x-rays uh, and uh, start the patient on iv antibiotics all the patients who are confused should be given um, antibiotics according to the trust policy because a patient may have uh, infection that could be contributing to the low gcs and uh, start the patient on thiamine chlordazepoxide um, and um, iv antibiotics iv fluids and glucagon if the patient does not have any iv line or dextrose if the patient has a iv line based on your finding if the patient has a hypoglycemia if there is no hypoglycemia then you do not need to worry about this in terms of the investigations chest x abg chest x-ray blood investigations unes lft crp full blood count uh, blood cultures urine culture if possible catheterize the patient you may in such situation not need uh, not reach to the diagnosis final diagnosis so do not worry about that uh, it is not always that you reach the diagnosis but do not leave anything unattended that can lead to the patient's deterioration that is the important thing keep your seniors involved and go and discuss with them if there is anything that you may be missing get the advice and do that and be careful about such patients who are coming with the confusion they may have c-spine injury as well okay look for any signs of injury if you can uh, find any signs of injury put the patient in the neck collar as well however this is uh, very less likely to be the situation in your plab 2 examination so main focus should remain towards a b c d e and assessing the patient intervening the patient as well as requesting all the necessary investigations refer the patient to the idu if the patient's gcs is eight or below or on avpu scale they are scoring v or unresponsive uh, they're scoring p or they are unresponsive that's all about it so do not worry if the patient does not improve clinically the patient may still want to sleep the patient may feel tired it will take some time keep an eye on your numbers and keep reassessing the patient every time you have completed one part of the assessment before you move to the next part reassess a patient from a to uh, a to e so cover the patient if the patient has a hypothermia that's all about it so these are very easy stations as long as you follow the a b c d e and the patient does not deteriorate uh, you are not doing anything wrong the other thing that i want to mention is always do the ecg for all the patients who are unwell and uh, especially for the cement stations you must check the ecg in circulation part and make sure that you do not move forward without seeing the ecg on the monitor i hope that you learned and you enjoyed if you have any question feel free to um, to ask me and uh, write your comments about this thank you